Hello YouTube and welcome to qualifying for the Daytona 500. We are set to go and set the front row for the Great American Race and join me for qualifying here today is Stephen Paul III. Oh, I just Hello started. guys. Did we did you bring the stat sheet up? Uh I know the stats for the one car. Uh, okay. So, we're waiting on we're waiting on officials to be able to release the one of Delon Abrahamian to the track. And part of that is because I actually haven't hit play. <laughs> I think. No, never mind. We're good. I just, the timer, I swear I saw the timer paused. Uh, so we're waiting on the officials to be able to release the one of Delon Abrahamian onto the track. Uh, Steven, what are you expecting for today while we're waiting? Uh, definitely some realism. Cloud cover and cloud over is going to be a big thing, especially with 62 cars, and this is going to take about five hours with everybody here. So the track is definitely going to change that in that time range. you guys will know on YouTube, in all honesty. This is probably going to be about an hour, hour and a half, I think. Yeah, well, I'm just talking about we're gonna how long cars are going to be at Daytona for. Every Hemian is one of the guys, the rookies from last season who has not run. His best career finish was fourth at Cleveland. He almost made the chase. And but did we it, are set to go. And he's on the track. The one car last season did some was god awful last year, and I haven't put in the Homestead results yet. Whoops! Oh, whoops! We only uh, have like five months to do that. Either way, Delon Abrahamian out on track, car number one. Uh, switch for Abrahamian. He drove the sixth last season for Roush yeah, for Roush Racing. So yep. Makes the switch over to DEI now. Uh, Club Cabinet on the deck lid right there. And I'm trying to count where he's. This is the, uh, tw This is the car that will be 21st in owners points from last season for Delon Abrahamian. 24th. 24th. Thank you. Sorry. He had car number one drew number one, which uh, is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, Delon Abrahamian coming off the Bud shootout a night ago, where he ran fairly well. Actually qualified on pole for that, so we'll have to see what he can do. Uh, kind of. Uh, well. How am I going to put this? This We've had races, but this is the first official race with the brand new car, and he will be the first ever drive the time trial in the car with the official brand new car. Well, as a full-time, not getting down to the bottom, that's going to be an interesting thing to follow in qualifying, is yeah. currently 189 miles an hour through one and two. Well, we got to remember, this is the old Daytona. This is, track has not been repaved since 1978, I believe, so bumps are definitely going to be difficult. So you don't want to go to the bottom of the racetrack because you can risk spinning out. And if you spin out of qualifying, you'll be a living, living legend forever. Well, not to mention also qualifying speed matters for every single car in the field except for about six, but we'll get to that later on as qualifying progresses. Either way, coming to the line for his one-time lap, Delon Abrahamian, car number one, sets a 46.952. Oof. I think they're going to be able to get three laps, I believe, no, in, so we'll see how they do. Lap. Just one lap. Oh, it's only one lap? Oh, yeah. okay. This, this is going to take a lot shorter then. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's not going to be the full five minutes. Okay. Either way, we'll go and show you the next car. Next on track is going to be Dylan Young in the number 24 Nicorette Chevrolet returning to the car that he drove last season and takes the green flag. Uh, Dylan won at Riverside, had a second at Texas. I believe he made a chase, right? Uh, yes, he did, actually. Um, 183 down in turn number one for the Nicorette Chevrolet. A couple miles an hour down on the one car. Now the uh, sun came out as well, so that's going to be an important note for this run. Henrik has five cars this uh, this. Um, year coming into here. The 24 car is at least won 3 to 4 a race in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series. Always been a stable car besides 2006. So we'll see how Dylan uh, does 2004 this year. I didn't win a race either. Well, 06, they, were miss they missed about everything in the sun with Louvier. Well, but they still won one or two times as well. Coming off turn number four, a little bit sideways, it looked like for Dylan Young. A little bit oh. of a handful for that Nicorette Chevrolet. He'll come to the line and complete his timed lap, and it will be. A 48.392. Oh, wow. oh, that's that's going to be bad. Yeah, that's Ooh, that's two the, seconds off. That's going to be the <laughs> difference between the car going out in the sun or not. All right. <laughs> and Dylan Young apparently got extremely unlucky with the cloud cover because the clouds are back here over Daytona for the 75 of Robert Pollard, who's on track for Derek Cope's team. 
So let me let me kind of I'll get the baseline. And anybody wondering, I did have to pay for this ride. So anybody wondering, but anyways, this, so what happened last season? Robert Pollard got took out the '98 car because of Steve Pollard, and they, we wanted him in the chase. Robert got mad at Homestead because he got replaced again uh, in Storm. We were we were joking about him going slower than Dylan Young. He's only 177 into turn one. Dylan Young was still 183, at least in the sun. Well, this is an R&D car for Everham for the 9, 19, and the 10. So it's pretty much a Derek Cope with Everham car. And uh, I this basically... Car this car does the... not look like it's going to have speed. It is 180 down the back straightaway. And this car is going to be in danger of definitely missing this race. Uh, yeah, because this is an R&D car. And you can basically understand what I'm saying by that. The 75 is, as, is still looking for his first win as the number. It's only ran one year with uh, Bassinet, I believe his name was. Matt Benassi was the f uh, driver who drove this. Robert and... Paldo coming to the line to complete his one-time lap. And it will be a 50.241. And BRB. four seconds off the pace of this one car. BRB committing suicide. BRB. Oh, man. <laughs> Terrible out for Robert Pollard. Oh. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Max Anderson on track in a second furniture row car, car number 87 out of Denver, Colorado. So Max Anderson last season, he didn't have a good season at all. He had a second place at Valts Arena. He had a lot of consistency he made races, but it was very inconsistent missing races. They're hence the reason for the green numbers that the difference between the 78 car. The 78 is bringing two, the furniture row is bringing two cars this year. Uh, the storyline in real life was this. The 87 was brought just in case Joe Nemechek missed the 500. But I don't think that would be playing out if the 78 misses this year, this race. <laughs> Yeah, probably not as Max Anderson looking good through turn one and two, 189. They're the same exact speed we saw out of Mohamed Zain Abdullah. Uh, this car is fat and we're uh, fast. This is a, this, they have technical support from Hendrick, and they're trying to get some more with two cars this year. Well, and also with Max Anderson, this car, worth noting, they do not have points to fall back on, so speed definitely... Qualifying well here today is going to be something that they want to do so that they have at least some way of trying to make the 500 if they can't race their way in. The time lap for Max Anderson as he comes to the line, a 47.237. That is good enough for second quickest so far. And another note about this first row, they've actually won a race every season they've competed. They won the Southern 500 and 8 Bowl last year, so we'll see with the second car if they can keep that winning streak going. Kira Aaronthade in the 37 now getting out on track with bright sunlight out there. The clouds have gone away at least for one car, although there is a lot of wind out there, so we'll see if that helps balance things out for this 37 team that does not have points to fall back on for the Daytona 500. We've only seen the number 37 twice in about in the All-Star and the Bud Shootout. I don't. I believe Meacham ran it for two races, and he crashed in the last one. First time we're seeing Furniture Row in a points race, and I believe the row. third. Front, damn it! Front row. Did, did as the thirty, did this thirty-seven run in season two or no? I believe they did. Uh, no, I don't remember them no. doing that. One eighty-four into turn number one for Aaron Thade, though the vote Kenny Jeggs Chevrolet for front row motorsports. Yes, in real life, this car crashed in the uh, qualifying and they withdrew. But we'll see if they have some better success. The thirty-seven team is definitely they finally going to make it. They have two cars just like Furniture Row. We'll see what they can do. Well, the they're going to at least finally make attempts. That's let's be honest. They we don't know if yeah. they're making them. Well, the thirty-four car miraculously made the 08, and we say a prayer for John and Dred Dred John and Dreddy too. As here they come off turn four. Yep. Here we go, coming down to the start finish line for Aaron Thade's timed lap it will be a 48 383 it is quicker than dylan young third quickest for the 37 oh yeah just barely but it is quicker man dylan young is on man dylan poor dylan <laughs> where is dylan in owner points uh they were i think seventh uh this is one of the cars that didn't have points and we'll go into the next one Seth Cole is the next car on track. He's making the switch from the 25 over to the 5 this season, but still stays within the Hendrick Motorsports camp. The 5 car coming off a season with Chris Washer where they saw themselves finishing 7th in the owner's points. Uh, so Seth has been around for a while, ran the 42 into the dirt in 06 in last season's. He actually has the longest active uh, losing streak in the series. I believe it's at and like 70 or 80. have won a race. 
of one race here, correct. Uh, Tom Shelley and Amy have got well, that reputation. Tom Shelley's on the not even active right now, so we'll... Amy uh, Shelley's Allie Nelson one. was the other one. Allie Nelson, who's in the 40 this year. We'll talk about her later. Uh, the five cars won the 06 driver's title with Washer, right? Uh, correct. correct. As their 187 into turn number one was Seth Cole. That's a pretty decent uh, mile per hour there. So I believe this is the same five team from last year. So I know Henrik had some internal changes this season. So, yes. If you're talking about the points being swapped around, the five is staying the five. So that's, that's why I said they're seventh in points. So as they go into turn number three, Seth Cole looks like it should be a decent lap. It's definitely going to be better than the 24s lap, I believe. We'll have to wait and see, though. Coming off turn number four, what will be the lap time for the Kellogg Chevrolet? Seth Cole completes his lap here at Daytona. It is a 47-47. That is good enough for third quickest. Uh, uh, yes. And Sky Commons is going to be the next car out on track. And no, this, your eyes do not deceive you. That is the 38 car. Mary Shelley not in the 38 for Yates Racing this season for the first time in Coconut Cup Series history. Sky Commons makes the move over from Red Bull Racing in the Toyota camp to the Fords for Yates this season. Uh, Commons has been like Charles, but a journeyman in the series. He won last year at Cleveland. He was below the 30th in points that killed him because he started to miss races. The 38 car, Mary won a championship with a bunch of races. Had a horrible season last year, which led to her departure. Now she got a worse ride. And we'll see how Commons can do. He's going to be teammates with Jack James. Um... So we'll see how that uh, tandem works this year. 189 going into turn number one there for at least a split second. So it looks like a good lap time. I don't know how well it's... We don't know how well it's tracking right now with the one. Uh, the 38 car, not going to have the most points in the world. I believe they're going to be about 36 in points. I could be wrong on that. And the reports from the team are this is going to be a one-year deal for Commons as the 38 plan Yates plans go to one car next year too. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. As coming down to the front straightaway, Sky Commons, the lap time for the 38, a 47.109. That is good enough for second quickest. So our quick rundown is it's now the 38 is second. Uh, Mohammed Zane, no, Delon yes. Everhimi. No, Delon Everhimi, that's right, yeah. So it's the and one Max Sanders, it's, it's 87, 5, uh, the 37, 24, and then Robert Pollitt in hell. Robert <laughs> So the next car on track is going to be the number 08 for Mary Shelley, the season three <laughs> champion of the Coke Vanilla Cup Series. Not going to be locked into this race because of the past champions, but does have a shot to be able to get into the race with that should Mark George race their way in in some capacity. So two quick things. The 08 is making their second appearance. The, the 08 ran with Jewel Austin, the 05 Bud Shootout. We haven't seen it since. This 08 team is a mixture between car, it's EM Motorsports. This is Carl Long and John Carter. We've seen some of the John Carter cars earlier with the 50 with Hercules, and then we saw the 50 in 04 season. So this car is extremely underfunded. And 189 into turn one, though. Um, They might have the Kevin LePage 05 motor in it, I guess. And we'll see how they can do. It's going to be a real struggle for this team this season. But they might be on the pole for the 500. They Who knows? They might have some speed in this 08 car. Um, can we please check the? Did, are I they using the M? Well, I didn't. I didn't remember what. I don't remember what Delon Ebrahimian speed into turn three was. But 192 for Mary Shelley. Did we get the MWR Nitrous from the 07 season in the car? <laughs> <laughs> Off turn number four, the season three champion of the Coke Vanilla Cup Series will finish up her run. Mary Shelley sets a 46.988 in his second quickest. And she beats Sky Commas. Now that is some satisfaction. <laughs> Faster than the 38 for Mary Shelley. She, that's a big suck it to run. Uh, what's it? Yates, Yates. Racing. <laughs> Henry Sanford on track in car number seven. The Robbie Gordon number uh, Dodge here for, with Jim Beam on the car. And this car will race in the 500 regardless of what happens on this run because this is the defending owner's champion. So the seven car is trying to avoid the owner's curse as we saw Eric and Rage's owner's help 06. And Oscon did nothing in the in the 29. So hopefully Sanford has better results. The Sanford won last season at Thornton. Was it Thornton? Yeah, Thornton. And he had a good stretch. 
Yeah, he had a good stretch to make the chase. This car is the highest in points, so he, no matter what he does in this lap, he will make the race in that and time. Right now, that's, that mile power did not look good going into turn number one. He's holding it firm at 184 right now off turn two. We so got the this vote. Is definitely not going to be a poles lap for the seven. We got the vote for Kenny. Now we got the vote for Robbie Carr. But anyways, Robbie Gordon does not have two cars this year, so we could let's see if that lack of information is going to hurt him this year. That might be. Who knows? Uh, definitely went down from two to one. But off turn number four comes the seven of Henry Sanford. The Jim Beam Dodge not going to be a pole speed. Will he at least beat the 24? Let's see. Cross the line. 48, 5, 6, 8. Only quicker than the 75. Go freaking, go figure. So that is eight of nine so far. Yeah, that that's not going to be a good lap. But that's also, that. oh, that's interesting. Isaac Flickinger in car number two, uh, making the switch from Furniture Row Racing to this very cursed car, uh, as this car has not found much success in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series up to this point. But we'll have to see if Isaac Flickinger can turn that around this season. Didn't Momo Akari make the chase in this car? No. Akari ran terrible in this car. Well, last season, Alex Rowe had one of the worst seasons in history till the, till the tail end when he won a race and hell froze over. And the two car actually ran a lot better. So I wonder if, that's, if that success can translate to the seats for the two. Well, they it's won looking good so far. 189 into turn one. I believe they won an all-star race with Daniel Day in this uh, car, if I'm not mistaken. Two of them, actually, I believe. That's the only time. Up till last season, that was the only time the two card won was in a non-points race. The two did not have a points-paying win up till last season with Alex uh, Hero. They got three full-time cars again this year, so let's see if that could translate and not have two of them below 40th in points. <laughs> yeah, true. Right now, I don't think this is going to be a pole lap for Isaac Flinger as he went down under uh, to 191, but coming through... The tri-oval, here we go. What is the lap time for the Miller Lite Dodge? It is a 46.983, just barely quicker than the 08. And on a side note, Isaac won at 8 bull last year, keeping the furniture roll streak alive, a side note. <laughs> so second quickest for car number two out of 10 so far. Jesse Turner in the 41 car, rookie for Chip Ganassi Racing this season. Driving the target dodge, we'll get back to this one in a moment, but at various points during this broadcast, we will update you on the top eight fastest cars so far, and this is going to be one of those points. Um, what's his name? Everhemian's first car out, still the fastest. The two car, how ironic, is second. Mary Shelley, Sky Commons, Max Anderson, Seth Cole, who was in the 37 again? That is Kira and... I'm, I'm going to struggle with that name. If you can tell me how to pronounce that, and I can make that a lot easier. Thank you. Either Dylan, way, Young, <laughs> Dylan Young is eighth, and then the 7 and 75 need to race in or fall back on their points. Well, to ensure it. They, they won't be able to guarantee a starting spot. Let's be honest. Let's start, say that. Either way, Jesse Turner, 189 into turn number one in this Chip Ganassi Dodge. Two rookies on this team as they're trying to look to do well again after what they did last season with the 42. So real quick on the back stretch here, the 41 kind of really didn't do nothing with Pierce last season besides a couple fourth places. The team did win the championship last year with the 42. The Driver only really wise. good driver wise, yes. The only really good car in the stable, the 41 and the 40 have struggled mightily the last two seasons. So we'll see how they do this year. And this one not going to be a pole lap for Jesse Turner as he comes off turn number four at 190 miles an hour. Should be still a very good lap though for the 41 across the line. A 47-042, that is going to be good enough to be just in front of the 38. Fourth quickest Fourth. for the 41. Not a bad lap. Cole Deaver in car number 33, the Realtree Outfitters Chevrolet for RCR, making the switch from DEI, the number 8, over to this 33 team. So the 33 team won two races with Stephen Paul third and those on sound six. Four races with Steve last was it? Yeah, four races with Steve last season. So big shoes for Deaver was to it fill. Four he, or was it three? Because remember, Steve won in the '98 once. Did he win five races last year? No, I don't think so. Might have been. I don't know. Either way, we'll see what happens. Uh, Cole, I don't think he won a race last no. season in the eight car. 
didn't make the chase either. So Cole will not be a rookie. Uh, RCR has got him, the 07 31 and I believe there's somebody else. 33, 29, 07. The 07. I think that's it, right? It's all I can think of right now. We're probably, we might be forgetting one. I don't know. 31, uh, so 31. 31, yep. So the 33 will be full time, not a part time effort this year. So we could see if they uh, can keep the same momentum. And this does not, this is a pretty looking, good lap. Well, it's looking like a good lap. It's not going to be a pole speed because he's 189, 188 now coming off turn number four but should still be a solid lap right now for Cole Deaver. We'll see where it places him through the trial and across the line for the 33. It is a 47.303. That is going to be uh, behind the 87. Seventh. That's a seventh place. Ouch. Okay, seventh quickest. So probably not going to be good enough to lock himself in today, but we'll have to see. It should be a solid lap, though. That's not what the 11 wanted, to, the 37 wanted to see. William Flickinger driving the number 77 makes the move to Penske from Chip Ganassi Racing where he drove the 40 last season. It was not a very good season, as mentioned somewhat before. Uh, so William was the DNQ champion last year. He had the best runner ever with a no rear end, no hood, half the car missing, and he finished sixth Indy on fuel mileage. So this is the 06 t team from last season. They did win a... They I believe they, they started... Ball. Uh, yeah, they won a pole. Win a <laughs> they didn't win a race, but they won a pole. They, they didn't do much at all with Johnny. Johnny had some family issues and things going on, which led to some of the downfall. 190 into turn one, though, for William Flickinger. They got. They actually somehow got Mobile One sponsorship with how poor, piss poor they ran. So let's see if that this sponsorship This might be a quick lap. I don't remember if the one. I'm pretty sure the one was 189 going into one. Flickinger was 190. And their teammate is second fastest, so that's not to the Penske power right there. 193 and into three so far, holding it steady. He's 192. Penske this doesn't want. This is going to be a really quick lap for William Flickinger. Yeah, Penske doesn't want another embarrassing season. So remember, and the Amy Shelley won three poles in the 12 last season. To the line for Flickinger. What's the lap time? 46.855 yep. is the pole speed for now. That is new provisional pole and the 77 returns for the first time since season one. Uh, was it season one or was it season two? Makoto Aguchi, I think, for the 77 Okay, when he last ran. But how about a little lap by the 77 car? Great lap for William Flickinger. Charles Sanford in the 05 for S3 Motorsports. The team Chevy Chevrolet, so they did not pick up full sponsorship at least in the normal sense coming to Daytona this team does have some points to fall back on if they need them though from last season uh so last season pretty much they got a bad season video and I'm still working on more but that's just all you have to know about last year Sanford is the 06 Daytona 500 winner and besides that the 05 10 years but nothing but lackluster so we'll see how they could do yeah. after three seasons they they this team won on debut at the at the Daytona 500 but did not do anything since then really uh, they have a few 187 though 188 actually going into turn number one so not a terrible lap I, I wonder if they still got that Morgan McClure backup car <laughs> uh we believe that that one's still in the shop but they're not gonna ever then it's not gonna be one that comes out this season so new sponsorship has seen last uh weekend so we'll see if they'll run that a few times this year uh there is a few new sponsorships that they'll be that they'll be able to roll out at certain points during the year uh stair brothers for some west coast races and then usbc for some others coming off turn number four at 190 miles an hour what is the lap time for s3 motorsports a former daytona 500 winner 47.244 that's going to put him eighth on the grid, right in between uh, Deaver and Anderson. So a, we'll have to see where that lap time holds up for the rest of the day. But for now, Charles Sanford would be racing on Sunday. Matt Dixon going to be piloting the number 70 car this season as the clouds have, uh, well, the sun has peaked through the clouds is what I should say there. Coming. So 70 comes into this season. They'll be 32nd in the owner's points from last season. Well, Joshua Osborne ran this car last season. He had one win at Road America, and after that, it was pretty lackluster. Dixon, a uh, 
journeyman driver to ran the 40 and 06 to absolutely nothing. He ran the 84 car, had really good success besides the DNQs. He would have been a championship contender if the car ran full time. So I expect good things out of Dixon. I believe he even ran, ran for Roush at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't remember the Roush. I know that he had Bill Davis. He's run for the PPI uh, team when they had the 32. Um, I believe he's run in every season. I would have to check on that. Yeah, so 70 card, bad draw with the uh, the sun out, but I expect Matt Dixon to be a contender this year in this car. And this is also rumored to be the last season for Haas C and C2, so we'll see how that plays out this year. Uh, yeah, there's not sure what's going to happen there. Uh, but the Atlas Company, I don't know how to say that sponsor really is. Uh, either way, Matt Dixon off channel number four. Not going to be a pull speed for him, obviously, but across the line, 48.816. 8.16. Oh, God. That's the that's slow. That's 14th for him. Ouch. 14th out of 15 for Matt Dixon. Only quicker and, than the 75. And before you show up, the 70 car is trying to get top 30 in the points for the first time in their career. They've never had a season higher than that. <sighs> uh, yeah, not in this series, at least. Johnny Gardner in the 25 car for Hendrick Motorsports, the second of their five cars to go out on track. And Hendrick Motorsports buying the 14 of Gin Racing's points from last season to lock this car into the field for this race as the 25 transferred their points over to the 88. So last season, Johnny had a horrible, horrible season in the 06. Missed a bunch, but he had a lot of circumstances. So this year, he's back to full health. He's got his buddy in the series. We'll see Evans later on. So the point swap deal was the 14 was the highest, and the 25, obviously, with Henrik, is a high-caliber team. So that's kind of the basis of the swap. This is a brand-new team out of the shop because the 25 went to the 88. So we'll see how this fifth brand-new Henrik car does this year. 188 going off into turn number one. It did flicker down to 187. So right now, he, we would assume that he is tracking down to the 77. Uh, so it's probably not going to be a pole lap for Johnny Gardner. But 190 going into turn number three, I think that's pretty solid compared to a lot of the other drivers. Can he hold the speed coming off turn number four? Down to 188 for the GoDaddy Chevrolet. Back to 189. Coming off turn number four, down into the trial for Johnny Gardner and the GoDaddy Chevrolet. The lap time is a 47.416. Going to be slower than the 05 car. Tenth fastest. So, tenth fastest for Hendrick Motorsports and the 25 team. It won't be good enough to lock themselves into the show here today. But, obviously, we mentioned that they will race due to the owner's point situation. Mm -hmm. Kenny Moma in the number 10. Oh, my God. We... Craps just decided to craps itself, I think. Everything. Oh, never mind. We're good. Somehow <laughs> my, my mouse clicked out of the game. Great. Uh, 10 out of 10 moments here. Uh, so the number 10 of Everham, we were going to update the top eight. We'll do that after the run. Uh, yeah. So new driver here, uh, Zach Rogers piloted the 10 last season, made the move over to the 19. So the 10 car wasn't really that. They had three top fives last year. Everham does have the help with still the fourth R&D car to help out him, his teammate, the 19, the 9. So we'll see how the 10 car could do this year. They were the second out of the Everham cars as Jackson was obviously reigning superior. Now with Jackson gone, let's see if MoMA can be the best one. 188 down into turn number one. 188 also on the exit of turn two. Doesn't look like it's going to be a pole speed here for Kenny Moma. I think he's tracking pretty close to the 25 car, if I want, if I hazard to guess. 190 down into turn three. You have to be about 192, 193 into turn one to get a good shot to the 77s uh, lap. Um, well, you can go a little slower. He's, he was 191 into turn one. He was 193 going into three, but the lap time for Kenny Moma as he crosses the line, going to be a 47.302. That's uh, ninth fastest. And I was right. He was tracking right around that 25 car because 25 wearing 47 41. So, uh, top eight so far? It's uh, the 77, the one of Abrahamian, the two of uh, Fluginger, 08 of Shelley, Turner, Commons, Max Anderson, Stanford are your top eight right now. And like I said, the 10 went ninth. William Duncan, one of the few drivers to not switch homes on the offseason, returning back to the RCR number 31, Singular Wireless, with actually, sorry, the AT&T uh, Chevrolet this year. 
Well, yeah, Williams uh, didn't really have a good season. He almost made the chase for the best of fourth at Richmond. I had another top five finish. The 31 hasn't really done much in the Colt Vanilla Cup Series. I'm not Says mistaken, that, right, Charles? Championship in season two. Uh, besides that season two championship that I clearly forgot about, the th our, the 31's kind of been like the second to third tier car, but with Duncan returning, might be returning to the flagship car. They have the 33 back, so that will help with some um, R and D stuff to get the car running well. And well, we thought this might have been a good lap, but only 187 down into turn number one for the 31. You were saying though. Uh, AT&T clearly won their lawsuit to keep the, the uh, sponsor on the car this year, so we'll see this car not unsponsored. So right now, I don't think this is going to be a very great lap. 191, just ticking down to 190 into turn three. He might be just slower than the 25, I would say. Uh, coming out turn number four, let's see what the lap time will be for the AT&T Wireless Chevrolet for William Duncan crossing the line. Going to be... A 47.364. It is just barely oh. quicker than the 25. 11th uh, fastest. Logan York in the 0 2 uh, Home Depot Toyota here at Daytona. Coming up out to speed right now. The 19th car to take time here on the famed 2.5 mile super speedway. So there's two things that since this is Rogan, he ran the mock season fucking cat. Um, he, so this is a fourth Joe Gibbs car. The first time they've had, they've had a four, uh, four Gibbs cars since uh, season two when the 80 car ran. So this is going to be a split between Gibbs and Ash. They so they're going to run the, the 80 last season too, by the way, at Homestead. Oh, that's right. I've, it was very unforgettable what Baron, Baronowskis made the race, though. But anyways, this car will be running Daytona and a few others. Ash will be doing Sonoma, uh, Phoenix, and Kansas, and the rest will be mixed, whatever Gibbs and Gibbs and Ash will plan out. So with Gibbs having a fourth car, they're kind of stretching their resources far. This is uh, pretty much the 20s backup car, but with a different paint job to differentiate it. So we'll see how York does this season. There's only 187 going off into turn number one, 190 holding firm, just ticking down now to 189 as he goes into turn number three. Not going to be a very good lap for the O2 as they do, and worth mentioning, they do not have points on this car coming into this one. He'll yeah, cross the good. line. We'll see what the time is for Logan York. It is a 47.570. Oh, that's going to, he's going to have to race his way. That's going to be lower than the seven car. 17th for the O2. Ouch. Yeah, that's not going to be a very good speed. Ouch. For Logan York. Ouch. <laughs> Raphael LeDuc in the 45 car taking over for Tom Shelley from last season. A rookie. For Petty Enterprises, we'll have to see how that can do as this team very much struggled last season. Uh, well, Tom Shelley had a good few top five runs, but pretty much the basis of Tom Shelley's tender in the 45, flipping at Vegas and not winning a race, having one of the longest non-winning, um, not to win a race, losing streaks, which he's not returning to season, so that goes to Allie Nelson. The 45 car, I've there have been a lot of rumors this might be their last season, so LaDuke is trying to... Um, Give the team one last revival as they might be merging next year with another team, but that's for further Lotus. We'll see how the 45 does this lap, but it's not going to be looking good. It doesn't look Clouds, like Clouds, the sun peeks through, and it's showing for LeDuc. 184 going off into turn number one. Not a good lap speed, right? or a good mile an hour going in there. Uh, obviously, we can only really compare based off the mile an hours, but right now, this lap time not looking good. The 45 does not have points to fall back on this year, and obviously, is. Uh, a key point last year also was at Daytona, the 43 and 45 took each other out. That was mainly because of Kev, but we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> uh, 187 off turn number four. The lap time for Raphael LeDuc, the Canadian, crossing the line. It's going to be a 48.111. It's not the slowest. Uh, that's actually faster than the 70, so that's 18th fastest, but that's still a horrible lap. And it looks like LaDuke probably not going to have speed to fall back on. He will have to probably race his way in through the duels. Jack Halleck driving the Toyota Certified Toyota for Bill Davis Racing. This is the 23 car from last yes. season in terms of the points. Uh, and right. looking for a good start to his season for the rookie. So the Halleck, the 27 last season was not, it hasn't been ran since season one or season two. Oh, no, Steve, Steve Paul was Steve the Steve Paul had driven uh, season four, actually. 27 yeah, was, yeah, the Kurt car. 
he made the he made the chase but didn't win a race. So the 27 still looking for his first win in the series. So the 23 last year had two wins with Stephen Paul III. He took his um, talents to Red Bull Racing. So we'll see how this car will do this year. Now there's also rumors this is also Bill Davis's last season. But once again, we're way early in the season. So we'll see how the 27 does because Bill Davis was really strong with Braddock last year in the 22. So let's see if the, the second car didn't perform as well. So we'll see if the 27 could match Braddock's performance last year. Well, right now, this is not looking like a good lap time. Only 186 down the back straightaway as the sun's still peeking out here at the high banks of Daytona International Speedway. Into turn number three, 185, holding firm for Jack Halleck. Not oh, going to be a good lap time. Let's see what it is, though, as he comes off turn number four. The basically unsponsored Toyota here for Bill Davis Racing. Across the line, it's lap time complete. 48.537. 19th fastest, but something I noticed too in turn three, he washed up the hill, which killed his momentum a lot. So 19th out of 21 cars to take time mm. here for Jack Halleck. So not going to be a good lap time for him. Jack James, car number 28, the Carfax Ford for Yates Racing. This was what was this car was the 88 last season. Jack James moving, making the move over to Ford from the Morgan McClure number four team. Yeah, the Ford dissolved after the offseason. So Jack got injured, missed a few races. He didn't really do much. He finished fifth. And then Daniel James, his brother, did absolutely about annihilate the field every race he ran. Well, killing everybody. But anyways, the 28 car was the 88 from last year with Anderson. They had a few good runs. Anderson was very consistent from the 10 to 20 range with the car, but missed a lot of races. Hence why they, this car is low in the owner points. But 190. Oh boy, at the turn one. 190 and holding it through turn one and two. This could be a quick lap for Jack James. You will Gaining see a lot of speed through turn one and two, actually. And you will see a lot of paint schemes for this car this year, too, because they got a lot of sponsors lined up. Looking good down the back straightaway for Jack James. 193 down into turn number three. Yeah, let's see if he can beat this. Uh, Holding it 192. William, William looking draw on provisional Provi pole right provisional now. Provisional pole is the 77 at a 46.855. Coming through the trioval, the lap time for Jack James will be a 46.79. That is provisional pole. That is fastest lap for Jack. What a lap! His teammate is sit as seventh now, so that's always a that's a flyer, man. Wow, a whole forty-five tenths faster than the seventy-seven. Uh, that was a you mean a tenth faster? Uh, forty-five one hundredths. You see, yeah, you said forty-five tenths. So Jack James goes quickest here at Daytona for now. We'll have to see what happens as the other cars go out later on. Mark George, the defending champion of the Coke Vanilla Cup Series, making the swap from Ganassi over to Haas CNC in the 66 car. So this car will race in the Daytona 500 regardless of what happens here today. Just a matter of where he will start. I believe this is... Did the 66 run full-time in Season 3? Well, they ran yeah. Season 4, the 2006 season. Yeah, so that they didn't really they won three races. I believe they made the chase last season. They were pretty much made almost every race, missed two, and they didn't really do much. So they we'll ran see last, year. last year, yeah. Yeah, they made almost every race. So Chris Wilson was in the car. Uh, his teammate was pretty dismal. So we'll see how he does. One eighty-eight into turn one for Mark George. A pretty good, a pretty decent uh, mile an hour there going into turn one. The self-sponsored Haas Automation Chevrolet here for Haas CNC Racing down the back straightaway. And he is windy right now. And Mark is trying not to pull a Mary Shell and use six PCs in the first six races. Yeah, that would. And this is a lap that mentioned. I should say Mary Shelley watching this lap uh, very well or very closely because if the 66 can get in, then the 08 will race regardless. Coming to the trioval across the line for Mark George. The lap time, a 47 45. 4 5 2. two. That's going to put him 14th right between the Hendrick cars. So it won't lock him in, but it's going to be a pretty solid lap time, I think. We'll have to wait and see what happens later on in the session. Tristan Wilhoy in the Claritin Ford, car number 99, the defending Daytona 500 winner of the Coke Vanilla Cup Series, making the switch from the 16 to the 99, staying within the team, though. 
So Woolhoit was up there in points, like we mentioned. He was only big race Woolhoit, who only had good runs the big races and pretty bad the other ones. Levi won, did pretty well in the car for two seasons. Who knows what happened to Levi? But he didn't win last year. He won two times in the 06 season. So the 99's kind of been the flagship car for Roush the last few years. And we'll see how that brand new paint scheme on the 99 car too this year. Waiting to see what the speed will be into turn number one. It's going to be 188 miles an hour. A decent speed kind of flickered down to 187 there. Not able to hold the speed all the way through that first corner. Yeah. Now where we've had the tailwind for most of the day. It's been an east wind for most of the cars so far from what I could tell. Going to be 191 as he goes off into turn number three. Not sure how well this lap time is really comparing. I think it's going to be a decent lap. It's not going to be a pole speed for Tristan Wilhoit as he comes off turn number four. What's it going to be for the 99? And across the line, 47, 3, 4, 8. So that's going to 47, 3, 4, 8. It's going to slot him 12 fastest. So like I said, a decent lap time there for Wilhoit. Jessica Shelton, the Nutty Bars Ford for the Wood Brothers here, returning to the 21 as she drove last season, and we've ran 24 cars, so it's another top eight update here before we get to her. So, yeah, the 21, sorry, I spaced out for a second there. I said the it's 21, another top eight update. Oh, <laughs> sorry. The top eight right now, the 28 of J uh, Jack James, the 77, the one, Ebrahim still third, the two, 08, 41, 38, and Max Anderson holding on to the eighth spot. Okay, and now the 21 from last season. Uh, Jess didn't win a race last year, but she was pretty consistent in the car, got a bunch of top fives, just a lot of bad breaks cost the team. So the 21's back, and they actually have the 47 not split with the Aussie team this year. So they'll have two full-time flagship cars. I don't remember. Uh, who 47, actually, for most of it, will e it'll either be MWR or JTG, actually. So it's not a Wood Brothers entry this year. Man, I really need to stop drinking. But anyways, so we'll see how Jessica... 190 into turn three. This should be a decent lap for Shelton, although I don't think she would have really concerned herself with the qualifying speed of this car. 21, decent on points, so if they can just put together a solid lap, I think they should have multiple ways of making the 500, regardless of uh, what happens. The lap time, though, a 47-42 with a zero. I think that's a very close lap to someone else. 15th. So 15th quickest, though, for Shelton. Should be a decent lap. We'll see how well it holds up for the rest of this field. So, Yeah, not bad. Sam Young in the 34 for Front Row Motorsports, making the switch from Gin Racing last season after the 14 shut its doors. And trying to make it into the show, this team will not have points for the first three races. So the 34, like I mentioned, the 37, they appeared twice in a shootout and an all all-star race. Have it, this is the first time we see the front row car. Sam won at Barber last season. Also has the 500 win. The 14 car got four at the points, and Sam made all three chases, but could not capitalize on any of those. The bright orange 30, 34 with a number. We'll see how they do. They're going to be getting help from, um, I believe, Henrik also. So we'll see how the team does. 188 to turn one. Pretty that's, a, per, that's been the, the average speed is what I'll say going into turn one. Actually gaining speed through 1 and 2, though, up to 189 down the back straightaway. That's something we haven't seen a lot of people be able to do so far in this session. 191 down the back. What's the speed into 3? It's going to be 191 miles an hour. This Ooh. could be a decent lap time for Sam Young, a team that definitely needs to have a good showing here in qualifying. Maybe not necessarily lock themselves in, but definitely give them some way to make the 500 like I said, no points on this 34 team. Down into the trioval, cross the line for Sam Young. It's going to be a 47-268. That's actually going to put him 10th fastest. A great lap time for Sam Young. That should give them some way to possibly make this Daytona 500. This is 2008 all over again. Adam McDowell in the UPS Toyota for Michael Waltrip Racing making his debut in the... Or trying to make his debut in the Coconut Cup Series, I should say, because... 44 obviously does not have the points to make it in if you watched last season because this 44 team definitely struggled a lot, although when they made it, they were quick. Uh, well, somewhat. The four, RJ Reynolds won 14 Q races, but didn't really do much besides it. He had the great three-lap comeback at three unit, and that's that pretty much the season. season. 
That was. All, yeah, it was pretty impressive. All the... Now, this family of drivers are all from the same person, so MWR is a family team this year. Hopefully not using jet fuel, and I'm a little disappointed uh, McDowell's not in the double zero. But when we go to Texas, we'll see what happens. But 180... Yeah, that, one. that was... That was... It, <laughs> I mean, side note, outside of just normal commentary that you'll see from me, I would have loved to have seen uh, this driver in the double zero because it would have made a lot less work for me. Um, it <laughs> so 191 down the back straightaway though as we get back into the lap for Adam McDowell 191 down into turn three as it flicks down to 190 though so this should be a decent lap time he's held up basically all the check boxes for a lap time that should be somewhere in the 47.3 range let's see coming to the line 190 into the trial for Adam McDowell across the line 47.310 uh, that's 13th fastest for the 44 I'd like to just point out, I called that as he's going into three. I, I am being, I've been paying attention. Yes, Charles is, Matt, is Larry McReynolds. He needs to get his trends. Stephen Paul the third in the 84 car as he makes the switch over from Bill Davis Racing Toyotas to Red Bull Toyotas. And this team also switches from part-time to full-time this season. The 84 in the offseason buying the Bill Davis 36 points. So maybe a little bit of a deal made there. So, yeah, as well, Stephen Paul third, he's won two races in the last two years. I believe he's getting close to the all time win mark, too. I could be wrong on that. To be fair, both of the, the two leaders of that are not in the series this season, so it's good chances that someone will overtake that this season. Paul's wins have been very stretched out two road course, a short track, and an SS win the last time. First time I've seen someone run that high on the track uh, to turn one. 84 car ran really good with Dixon last year. They won about a race or two. They and every time. Ra they won Martinsville last year. Yeah, every time they made a race, they were pretty fast. Besides, even the DNQ races, they were fast. So good good uh, omen for the 84. And now there's t they have two other teammates this year, two full time. And 192 down into turn number three for Stephen Paul the third. We haven't seen that one. This should be about a this should be a low 47. It looks like I don't think it's going to be a pole speed for Stephen Paul the third. It might be a 47 one. I don't know. We'll see. Coming down to the tribal 191 for Stephen Paul the third across the line. It's going to be a 47 153. Which that's going to put him eight fastest. <laughs> And so a Rip. very good lap for Stephen Paul the third is that team does not have many points. We said they bought the 36, but that's only good enough for like 36 place points. Yeah, that's a good lap. So a great lap for Stephen Paul the third. Not gonna, it's gonna lock him in for now. We'll have to see if that holds up. Ryan George in the 49 for Bam Racing. The Dodge here this week. They will run a Dodge and a Toyota mixture this year. Um, the 49 team part-time last season, so they will not have the points to be able to make the 500. So we'll have to see if Ryan George can put together a good qualifying lap here to try and, try and give this team some way of making the 500. Ryan, so Bam Racing has somehow won a race at Michigan last year, the biggest miracle ever. Uh, Bam was part-time. They ran season one, and I think they were in season four. In season, well, yeah, I, they might have been season two. I don't know. They know they did pretty good in season one, so we'll see how Bam Racing does with this alliance. Uh, there's also rumors. One eighty-seven into turn one, though, for Ryan George, so it's not a good start to the lap. We'll have to see how he go, how it goes. Uh, Bam is pretty low because they part time. They missed a whole bunch of they missed like fourteen races um till their next start, and also rumors that they're not returning. But once again, we're early in the season. Just the speculation in the garage. 189 into turn number three, oh, down really to 188. Bad. This is not going to be a good lap for Ryan George, but the week is still young, and remember, there is the duels, so we'll have to see who knows what the lap time is going to be. Let's see. Coming to the line, Ryan George sets a 47.632. That will be 22nd fastest. I don't think that's going to be good. I don't think that's going to be good enough to be able to make this field, at least not on speed. So... Ryan George probably going to be one of the cars that has to race their way in through the duels on Thursday. Bill Braddock Jr. driving the number 17 USG Sheetrock DeWalt Ford for Roush Racing, making the switch from Bill Davis over to Roush and taking over for Brennan Patterson, who retired in the after the end of last season. Uh, Bill, the 17 had Patterson for uh, a few uh, years. They have really big minus milestones. 
Yeah, since then he won a bunch of races in the car. The car didn't make the chase, didn't really have a good season, hence his retirement, why he didn't want to go to the bulky cars. So we'll see how he does. Braddock did really good. He won a race, he was second in the points for the longest time, but the chase, he just crapped the brick in the chase. So we'll see how he does this year. And as you can tell, the sun peeking through here at Daytona International Speedway, unfortunately for Bill Braddock Jr., so it's not going to be a good lap, most likely. 184 into turn number one. Yeah, this is going to suck. Down the back straightaway up to 187 still. So we'll have to see. Right now, I think what he's going to be looking for then is to try and hopefully beat some of the other people who had Sun on the track. Maybe at least try and beat Dylan Young, I think, would be his goal. Yeah, the 99's 15th, and he's not going to beat his teammate for sure. I mean, to be fair, the 17th's going to have some decent points to be able to fall back on. It's just they're not going to have the speed then. Yeah, Roush family's got five cars too this year. 187 in the trial across the line for Braddock. It's going to be a 48.196. That's actually 23rd fastest, so that's faster than Dylan Young, so that's positive. It's 23rd out of 30 cars to take time then, so not, not bad, all things considered. There we go. Austin LaPlan is the next car on track. We had a little bit of technical difficulties there. Uh, the 46 car returning for the first time since Season 2, at least in terms of a points race, and Austin LaPlan... First time in a little over a season that he's been it. First, uh, last time he drove was four, season four. Last he, full time season was season three. Yeah, he ran the twenty five car and got and was booted out. Uh, the forty six well, cars entirely actually exited out. It's a dodge. Uh, I don't expect much, and I heard the team was planning on skipping the sprint showdown. <laughs> one ninety into turn three. I didn't quite catch the turn once because I was more worried about trying to get the intro for this car done because we got a little bit of a late start on it. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to be a very good lap. We'll have to see for the 46 across the line. No points on this car. 47, 267. That's actually pretty good. That's actually, uh... Um, Faster than 34 by a thousandth. It's 11th, 11th on the board. So a decent lap there for the 46. It's not going to lock Austin LaPlante into the show here today, but it should yeah, give him help. a good chance. Amy Shelley on the track in the National Day of Prayer number 78 getting up to speed and we have just passed the halfway point in qualifying and so with that we're going to give a full field update actually on this car. It's going to be a little quick. Jack James is the fastest. The 77 is William, right? William Flickinger in the 77. Then it's the 1, the car of the Ebrahimium, the 2, the 08, 41, 38, 84, 87, 05, the top 10, 46, of LaPlante, 34, 10, 33, 44, 99, 31, 25, 21, 66 to the top 20. Seth Cole, the 02 car, 49, 17, the 37, Dylan Young, Henry Sanford, LaDuke, the 27, Matt Dixon, Robert Pollard are the 31 cars. And Amy Shelley making the move from Penske over to Furniture Row Racing from last season. 188 down to turn number one. I'll hand it back over to Stephen for the... Uh Stats. The, the 78 car has won the Southern 500 and a race last year, but they've never got themselves higher in the points. They've always struggled. This team was part-time last year. Two cars this year for uh, the Furniture Row guys, and we'll see if they can keep the momentum. Amy, like we've talked about before we did this, Amy won a pull in the 89 car, the, the 12 car, and let's see what she can do in the 78. Was 192 down into turn number three, a very good uh, mile per hour. We'll have to see held... 190 for most of the corner just barely went down to 189 this should be a top 10 lap i think for the 78 we'll see across the line for amy shelley 47 235 that's actually faster by two one thousand second than his teammate we're at two three seven Her teammate or te damn it damn it amy shelley's a girl uh there goes the comment section now you're, you were saying though about 78 to the 87 two one thousands faster than his teammate right together nice <laughs> so, very consistent lot times out of the Furniture Row Racing Crews. Jonathan Ramp. Zorline out on track now. The Amp Energy Chevrolet car number 88 for Hendrick Motorsports. What was the 25 last season? Zorline returning back to Hendrick Motorsports after a one-season hiatus in the Robbie Gordon team last season where he won the owner's title. Uh, and this car, I don't know where, I don't remember where they were at in those points for 25. Uh, they were pretty decent, like I mentioned with Seth. They had a couple second place, but couldn't close the deal as Seth continues to lose the streak. This is the 25 to 88 team. Like I said, the 25 is a brand new team. Uh, and the uh, what's sun peeked through the clouds, unfortunately, for Zorline's lap. So this is not going to be a pole speed, unfortunately, for Zorline, it looks like. 184 down into turn number one. So that's a 
good speed for the conditions. Actually picking up speed though through one and two, 185 down the back straightaway. Zorline did win at three unit last year, survived, so we'll see what he can do in better equipment than the seven. So we'll see how he does with the well, with last one time of the Hendrick, it didn't go very well. What, when did he run for Hendrick? Wasn't he in the 48? He was in the 44 and then took over the 25 when LaPlante dropped out of the series. Yeah, I remember him winning a bunch of those DNQ races. But here he comes off turn four. Off turn number four. It's been a decent lap for Zorline as he comes in a tribal across the line for his one and only qualifying lap. It is a 48.260, all pretty decent, all things considered. Uh, actually, 26 fastest, so another Henrik car in the toilet. <laughs> well, like I said, decent <laughs> considering the conditions. I mean, not many people have actually had the sun peak out today. Yeah. Ali Nelson in car number 40, making the switch from Bill Davis over to Chip Ganassi Racing. And the lone veteran driver on the team for this season is Ali Nelson. Looking for her first career win in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series. Trying for it to hopefully come this season. Yeah, Ali has the long, well, technically the longest losing streak and the long non-active winning uh, streak. I believe it's at 90 races. So she ran for Bill Davis's 22 at one point, the 36, and hasn't really had much at all any I success. I swear I think she's been at the Chip Ganassi at one point. I don't remember when. I don't remember. Uh, I, sorry, Charles. I felt like she had driven this car, uh, driven one of the Ganassi cars. I don't remember. The 40 car won the DNQ championship, almost won the 06 if it wasn't for Newark. The 40 car struggled mightily the last two years. Let's see if, if she could bring more speed to the car. Well, this is she's 188 into one and picked up speed through one and two, so it's looking good down the back straightaway. This should be a solid lap for the 40. And on a side note, this is Brian Clausen's car he missed Charlotte in 2008. We send out a rip to Brian because a lot, a lot of people might not know about this scheme. 189 off of turn four, lost a little bit of speed going through three and four. Coming down to the line, the lap time for Ali Nelson, a 47 212. That's going to be ninth quickest. A great lap time for Nelson. Not going to be good enough to lock in today, but should be solid enough to be able to try and fall back on, those, on the speed, considering this team does not have the points. Does not have the points at all. Chris Louvier next on track in car 43, making the switch from Chevy to Dodge as he drove the 01 for Gin Racing slash DEI last season. Officially on the points, it was Gin Racing, but now makes the switch over to the Petty 43 for this season. Needs to make it in on speed or race their way in through the duels to be able to actually make the show. Louvier, I believe, won about two or one race last season in the 01 car. He had a pretty good season, but he had a 100-point lead with five races to go and utterly choked it away in the 01 car. In the 43, we've gone from Jessica Shelton to Kev Shear and now to Louvier. What a cycle of... Gene Sanford also drove this car. <laughs> so we've, we've gone from talent, little, no talent, to somewhat talent. So we'll see how the 43 does this season. 188 into turn one. I saw 189 as they exited turn two. Uh, I said they had to make it in. I think they've got some points. I think Kev salvaged something at the second half or the end of the last season and got into the top 42, but it's not going to be solid points for this 43 team. Coming off turn number four, 189. This should be a low 47, I think. Coming into tri oval, the time for Chris Louvier going to be a 47 318. That's 18th fastest, and the 43 hasn't won since season three. Yeah, Michigan. No, season four, Michigan, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, season four. You said season three. Ah, uh, yeah, season four. Yeah, season four, Michigan, when Jess won up, uh, in that car. But 47 there for Louvier should be a good time. Jeffrey White, the next car to take his lap time. This will be the 36th car to take to the Daytona International Super Speedway. The Roush Racing Ford donning the American Red Cross colors this weekend for the Daytona 500. So the 16, like we mentioned, with Light, they won about every big race. Did it didn't do anything besides that. The 16 car has had pretty good success in this. It didn't really do much in season four, but we'll see how he does. White is a rookie in the series, and um, Roush has only got five cars instead of six this year. So let's see if that downgrade is going to help them with speed. Well, 189 flashed up there going into turn number one. Flop, or it's going between that and 188 as he goes through one and two. Yeah, uh, Will Hoyt is 19th right now. So uh, that's the only Roush car that's gone. Oh, the 17th is 27th too. 
Hmm. 191 down the back straightaway. What's the speed going to be in this three? That's what it is. 191. It's holding firm. Now goes down to 190. This should be a good lap. I'm going to say this should be about a 47-0, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, 190 yeah, as he goes into the trioval. The lap time for Jeffrey White. 47217. Okay, I was a little off this time. That'll be tenth fastest right there. We haven't had a tie in any spots yet. <laughs> Amazingly, right? Yeah. So tenth so, quickest there for the sixteen. A very good lap time for Jeffrey White. Jean Sanford gonna be the next car on track, trying to make her first ever start with the newer bodied cars as she drove only part time last season with the forty seven team. Uh, with that said, they actually came in this one. They were 43rd in points last season, so they just missed having points enough to actually make this race on time, on points. Yeah, so like I misspoke earlier when the, in the race. So this is going to be a Woods Brothers slash, uh, not Woods Brothers, JTG Doherty, the uh, 59 team in the Hooters series, and the um, Michael Walsh Racing MWR team. So pretty much in real life, what they did was the double zero disolluted and the 47 Marcus had more talent, so they brought the car to keep it the top 35. So in this game, we're going to be splitting it in this series. Uh, Gene won at Irwindale, and the whole Sanford family threw a party after that, and Charles did not win a race last year. So we'll see how Gene can do. Gene is the most consistent driver in the series with runs, just can't get wins. Fifth in the season, four points, and part-time last year. We'll see what Gene can do. 190 to turn three, though. Yeah, and to be fair, what I will say is, in past seasons, what it's looked like is Gene has kind of been one of those masters of qualifying. She's really good at trying to put this... Car uh, put a car in the field when it doesn't have the points to be able to make it otherwise coming to the line 190 through the travel the lap time 47 41 with a three for gene sanford 41 three that's gonna be 20 second fast and that's correct gene only missed two races last year so you said 20 second 20 second fast so, right right ahead of Gardner. not exactly what we would have kind of expected uh, gene but that said, part of that could be down to the conditions, but let's see if that speed will be able to be good enough to make the show. Brett Moma now up on the track in the 96 car, which is making its return to the series after a one-season hiatus. And unfortunately for the 96 team, the sun has peaked through the clouds once again at the Daytona International Speedway. So pretty much, which is funny, this is exactly the old, this is the fifth Joe Gibbs car, which also will be splitting with DLP when they don't have the funding as, uh, what's the sponsor, uh, what's the TV thing it's called? Hall of Fame Racing is the team. What's the sponsor they have? Uh, it's DLP, it's, that's literally what it is, yeah. DLP is not returning and they're cutting back the races, so Gibbs will be filling in the slots just like this one. Five cars for Gibbs at the Daytona 500, and this is going to be a horrible lap for the 96. So he's going to have to race by three down into turn number one for Brett Moma. That's not good compared. To, basically, he's trying to compare himself to all the other cars that did not have cloud cover, and right now I don't think this lap time is going to hold up well. And the thing is, he's going to have four other teammates, depending how they get in the duels, but he's going to need a lot of help. Uh, this is definitely, it looks like this is going to be one of those cars that definitely will have to tr race their way in and not have any other way of making the Daytona 500. Off turn number four, 186 down into oh, the trial The lap time for Brett Moman not going to be good enough to make this field 48, 44 with a five. Oh, God, that's 35th quickest. Man, Joe Gibbs is going to have their hands full. 35th of 38 cars to go out there for the 96 team. Not what they would have liked. Unfortunately, got a little bit unlucky with the weather, but and in terms of when the sun went out, but what are you going to do? That's not much you can do about it with Daytona, and let's see what they can do on Thursday. Samet Ozcon, one of the drivers that's uh, new, uh, same face in a new place this season, or one of the many. Samet Ozcon last season drove the 29 for RCR and now makes a switch over to DEI and driving the number 8 that Cole Deaver piloted last season. Yeah, the 8 had a best for the 4th, didn't really perform too well. Uh, Smet, the living legend, won back-to-back -back road course race the DNQ Series. That was pretty much the highlight of the season. He took an owner's championship 29 from 06 and drove it in the dirt last year. So hopefully he does better things than the 8 car this year. The 8, this is the last year at Rubers with DEI. The 01, the 8, and I believe the 15 is DEI still, right? Yes. And so only three, 187 down in turn number one. Not a good speed for Cement Ozcon right now. This is not shaping up well. 
Yeah, Samet was not a really good qualifier last year, so we'll see if he can parlay this to get some speed or something. That Man, barely hitting the, That car's moving a lot down that back straightaway. Yeah. I haven't seen cars move that much down the back straightaway so far. 189. Oh, this is going to be 188. This is not a good lap for Samet Ocon considering the conditions. He was lucky enough to get cloud cover, and I don't think it's going to go well. This Maybe a 48? Yeah. Or, well, it's probably in 48s, I should say. A 47, 55 with a 3. Okay, that was way off. So, that's 27th fastest for the 8. 27th out of 39. A lot better than I thought it was when we saw 187, though. So. How bad? Wow. Steve Pollard, in a brand new team this season, made the switch from the 33 to the newly founded 82 car for Red Bull Racing, a third car for this operation. The second of the two of the three to go out on this session, and we'll do a top eight update here so far in this session. So, the top eight is uh, Jack James still on pole, he went out pretty early, it's holding on to that. William Flickinger, Delon Ibrahim, who went out first, is still third. The two car of I don't remember, Isaac the Flickinger. Eight, Isaac Flickinger, Mary Shelley, Jesse Turner, Sky Comments, and Stephen Paul the third. Red Bull at 84 is eight, so we'll see if Steve can parlay that. And this is not looking too good. 185 at the line. Well, remember, we've been gauging it really off of the turn one speed. So he goes off into turn number one, 188. That's about where everyone's been, basically, for the most the part. Car, so The car has no points. Uh, Steve won four races last season. He won. He didn't win in 06. Four, he's been a, four or five, I guess. I don't he, know. He's, have to check. he's been a... He's been a journeyman for sure. He ran for Jasper, uh, Kurt Schellmerdine, RCR. 192 in turn three is definitely good. And now, Red Well, 192 dipped down to 191 as he went down into the corner. It's now 190. Steve is rumored to drive the 04 car next year, but once again, that's just garage talk. Coming off turn number four, the run to the line for Steve Pollard. His qualifying lap in the books. The lap time, a 47-22 with a nine. Uh, that, wow, that was a really good lap. That's 11th fastest. So a good lap for Steve Pollard. That should put him where he can probably fall back on his speed if need be. We'll have to see. It depends on what happens on Thursday, obviously. Zachary Fitzwater in car 29, the next driver to take to the two and a half miles super speedway here at Daytona. Uh, for Fitzwater, he drove the 19 last season, actually. Now makes the switch over to RCR. Yeah, he won. He swept the weekend, I believe, at Twin Rig, and after missing a race, he had that vengeance. Didn't really do much besides that. He was a rookie last year, if I'm not no. mistaken, right? He drove. No. Remember the storyline in 2004? Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we don't talk about that storyline. We don't want to have a uh, the uh, 19 two story or something like that. The 29, <laughs> the 29 car won the season four owners championship. Cement Oldscon ran into the ground last year. So we'll see how the 29 can rebound, but 190 to turn uh, two is pretty good. If anyone's actually curious about what that storyline is, you can go back to season two and you can check it out. It's around, it's race 21. It's kind of a funny one, uh, but we don't mention that anymore, and we don't need to repeat. And needless to say, Fitzwater is on all the drug test lists now. Uh, <laughs> he's still, wait, he's still on Adderall. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> one ninety or one one ninety as he comes into the tribal now. Zachary Fitzwater, the lap time for the twenty nine team is going to be a forty seven three five five. And you're going to need drugs after that run. He is currently twenty uh, first. No, twenty uh, second. Sorry. Okay, right, so twenty second quickest. Not gonna, not gonna be what we were probably thinking is going to be a solid lap time. We'll have to see where it holds up though for him. Chris Wilson on the in the Caterpillar Toyota car number 22 now takes to the track. Chris Wilson last season drove part time in the 66 car for Haas CNC Racing. Now making his trying uh, will be attempting his first full time season. Let's see how many of the races he can make and all that good stuff. But high enough in points where they should be able to make the 500. Yeah, so the 22 car, was they won at Las Vegas. They had a pretty good regular season. The chase was pretty dismal, like we were talking earlier with Braddock. The 22 had Allie Nelson before. They really didn't do much with Nelson. They didn't win a race. So, Bill Davis, like like I said, rumors in the garage, this might be Davis's last season. So, trying to go out with a bang. Uh, this is the Caterpillar Excavation Scheme, I believe. So, a nice paint scheme. And unfortunately for Wilson, the sun decided to peek through the clouds once again over the Daytona International Super Speedway. 
Man, that's a that's a rim. The 27 car actually had the Sun too, and they're th 39th fastest. So I guess Bill Davis hates Daytona. <laughs> now you're mentioning some of the former drivers of 22. Actually, one of the former drivers is in this field. Sky Commons drove the 22 back in season one. I don't remember how that one went for him though. As coming to the line, the lap time for Chris Wilson going to be a. 48.465. That's really going to be... That's slower than the 96. That's uh, going to be 39. That's going to have to uh, race his way in. Well, so they either have to race in or fall back on their points. When they Correct. So, yeah, that's why... Yeah, not a good lap for Chris Wilson. Yeah. Peter Onjack <laughs> is going to be the next car to take his lap time here at the Daytona International Super Speedway, trying to make his... Coke Vanilla Cup Series debut and not looking like it's going to be a good lap for him, most likely given the circumstances. But the 07 car ran well. They finished top 30 last year. I'll say that much. Uh the 07 car they were they had who was the driver last? Will um it was Will Lewis, I think. Yeah. Will, Will Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Will Lewis is not returning to season this year. I don't believe. Nope. So their best finish, I believe they won at Bristol earlier yes. in the year. Yeah. So. The 07 car has been pretty decent. I mean, it's kind of like the mid-pack of the RCR cars. And with a rookie, we'll see how they do. And on Jack, that's going to be pretty easy to pronounce. Yeah. Right now, what uh, on Jack wants to do at the very least here is he does want to beat a 50.241 as his lap time. I think he should be able to do that. Yeah, rubbing the salt in the wounds right there. Uh, Let's see how he does. <laughs> so he comes off turn number four at 185 miles an hour. The rookie for RCR, Peter Onjak, crossing the line, and it's going to be a 48.487. So that oh, will that's... officially bump Robert Pollard from the fastest 42. And so the 75 team will have to race their way into the Daytona 500 on Thursday. Oh, that was a brutal lap. That was slower than the 22. Yeah, it was. Kyle Matthews will be the next car out on track. Car 48 as Kyle Matthews returns to the ride that he had last season. Uh, did not end very well for him. And unfortunately for him, the season's not starting out very well with the weather. Um, yeah. The Kyle. Okay. Oh, ahead. sorry, Charles. No, go ahead. The, fine. No, I mean, the, the car is he's running is the Jimmy Johnson 250 start car. The 48 car had a first decent season. 06 was pretty dismal. And like Charles mentioned before I uh, interrupted him by accident, 48, 8, 16 is the bump speed. So uh, we'll see how the 48 car this season. It's pretty ironic. The 48 dominated in this time period. And now in this uh, universe, they're absolutely horrible. Put it this way. We were doing some stat checking over the course of the offseason. We're still actually in the process of doing that. So it's more comprehensive when we're doing all this recording, all the footage. And... We figured out that the 48 car in the history of the Coke Vanilla Cup Series has never gone to victory lane. Could you imagine, imagine that? William Duncan ran the car for a year, too. William so. Duncan ran it. Samuel Ogo's been in behind the wheel of the 48 car. Um, Kyle Matthews, obviously, the last two seasons. Hendrick's best car is 25th, too. That's a huge rimp. Coming down to the line for Kyle Matthews. Not going to be a good lap time, obviously, with the sun. 48-50 with a 5. Oh, that's 41st fast. Slower than on Jack, man. Every car's been going slower with the sun, man. Oh, my Lord. That's brutal. Not a good lap time for Kyle. The only bright side for him is he did make the top 42 for now. Nice pun, Charles. <laughs> Tim Randolph, one of the other drivers who is returning to the same ride that he drove last season. And it was no surprise that they're doing that. After all, Tim Randolph took the 60 car to the chase of season ago and looking for better things here yeah so the sun i wish we had this in july at daytona but the 60 car he made the chase was didn't win a race but was scarily consistent but he kind of that consistency went away in the chase uh coming back in the series to see how i could do this might be the last year for the 60 once to get room in the garage this is pretty much a fifth a sixth roush car but under the uh See, uh, no fear racing logo, so we'll see how he does in this car. Uh, he has two... into one. Uh, what's the bump speed? The bump speed is a 48537, and I cannot wait to see the brand new 60 paint scheme they're going to debut this year. It looks beautiful. 
we've seen a sneak preview of it at least a little bit. We saw the uh, quarter panel, I believe, is what they unveiled when they were showing the car off. Yeah, or they showed the front end of it. I don't know. Either way, yeah. going off into turn number three for Tim Randolph, it's 186. We It was 187 for a moment before it ticked down to 186 going into the corner. 185 well, off turn four, a decent mile an hour for the conditions. This might be at least better than the 48 car, at least. Yeah, Down 20... to the line for Randolph, it is a 48-344. Well, that's a lot better than the last three have been going slow. That's 38 fastest. Not good, but that belts now the 27 car has to race their way in. Uh, well, remember, the 27 will have the 23 points still to fall back on, too. So. Yeah, so they can possibly, have both. Possibly. Possibly. So. Yes. Ethan Keiterman, now the next car on track. The debut of Jermaine Racing in the Cup Series, if I'm not mistaken. The Geico Toyota, car number 13. Yes, the 50 car was, the, like I mentioned, John Connor with Don Arnold, even though Jermaine sponsored him. So they finally move up with the car with the Geico machine. We're going to see this thing of being a staple for the next 10 years in the series. Keiterman is a rookie, so we'll see how they do. We have, And they're running a Toyota, too, so that's going to help the Toyota be strong. So, so not much to say. Worth mentioning, this is a car that does not have points, and they're 189 going into turn number one. That is a good speed, at least in terms of miles an hour, for trying to make this race. And I owe Keterman a Corona beer for uh, helping out getting rid of Gabe Williams on the website, so thanks for that, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steven's had a gripe against uh, Gabe Williams forever. 192 off into three. Wow. This is a quick lap time for Keterman. Damn, what did your main put on the car? Some uh, nitrous or something? They've been working on their program over the last few years, trying to build it up to make it a cup team. And it looks like the work's paid off as they come to the line. The lap oh, time for cool. Ethan Keiterman is going to be a 47.029. That's six fastest. Holy crap. Paul Swanson did all that testing. It was great. And that will bump out the, o the 48 car. So Kyle Matthews will not be able to fall back on qualifying speed, although that's just basically confirming what we thought once they ran their laps. So, <laughs> But a great lap time for the 13 team in Jermaine Racing should be good enough to try and fall back on if they need to on Thursday. Marcus Ambrose is the next car to take his lap as this will be the 47th car to take time here at the for the, uh, for the Daytona 500 qualifying. Couldn't speak there for a moment. Ambrose, a rookie in the series, taking over for Charles Jackson, who drove the nine last season. So the nine car was pretty good in the regular season, winning the regular season championship. Didn't really do much in the chase with Jackson. Jackson retired after this. Uh, they got into a sponsorship from Budweiser this year as they move over from the eight car, so it's going to be very interesting. They, Like I mentioned with the other cars, they have the 75 to R&D, so we'll see how the nine car does this year. And um, isn't this an Australian driver from the... Uh, from the supercar series? Uh, yes, I believe so. As 190 down the back straightaway, he was 187 through 1 and 2, uh, at least for a little bit. So this is probably not going to be a pull lap for Marcus Ambrose, but the 9 team does have 6th place in owner's points from last season. So regardless, they should be safe to make the Daytona 500. Coming off turn number 4, it's going to be 189 as he makes the run to the line. The lap time for the rookie out of Australia is going to be a 47-42 with a 7. So that will slot him in here. 47-427 would be a put him 28th fastest. Okay, so probably not going to be very safe on speed, but like I said, should be safe on points. Yes. William Brock is going to be the next car to go out onto the racetrack as... Let's see, where did William Brock... William Brock making the switch from the 18 last season, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, so Bro we uh, on Jack was bumped from the field with the last run too, but on to Brock, he wasn't really too good in the 18. He missed a bunch of races, but again, again, the 18 has been really too good in this series anyways. They had a fourth place run somewhere. I don't even remember where exactly. Brock ran all three series last year. He's kind of been a journeyman in the series too, so we'll see how he does in the 20 car. Journeyman in, his only, in only his second season, and he's driving the same team? Come on. Oh, it's, it's his second season. It's only oh. his second season. Oh, I thought he ran. F oh, he's so he's been around the NR community for a while. That's why. Uh, so the bump speed as 189 off into turn number one is going to be a what for this run? It, the bump speed is a 48.465 set by um, the 22. That was Chris Wilson. 
This one looking like it should be a good run. 191 down the back straightaway. Should be about 193, 192 going off into turn three. We'll see. Great lap time going. 192 yeah. down into turn number three. Now down to 191. This should put him in the top eight, I would believe. Yeah, Charles hated this car last year because Floored won at, I believe, was Ontario or something? Oh, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> down to the trial of William Brock will complete his lap. It's going to be... A 47.069. That's actually eighth fastest. Holy crap. <laughs> Just barely puts him into the top eight for now, but might not lock his way into the 500 today, but will do a great job setting himself up to be in the field for the Daytona 500. And that bumps Wilson. Brian Hart in the Napa Auto Parts Toyota Car 55 from Michael Walter Racing, a rookie in the series. And this is going to be one of our top eight updates for the qualifying session so far. So I'll try to give the names. The 28 car is Jack, Jack James. James. He's still Jack James. William Fligginger in the 77. Everheeman, who went out first, is still fast. The two car is... Isaac Fligginger. The, Isaac Fligginger. Mary Shelley, the 13 was... Uh, that one was... Oh, um, <laughs> Ethan... No, yeah, Ethan. The 41 was Jesse Turner, and who just went out was Brock is eighth. As the 55 car on track, they were they won a pole by going 30,000 miles per hour faster at, I think it was Pig Stadium. That was pretty much the highlight of their season, and MWR did pretty much not much last year. Yeah, but they are back. a full second quicker, I think it was, at Pig Stadium than anyone else. Yeah. They're try they're pretty good lap going right now for the fifty five too. One ninety two down the back straight I didn't quite catch the speed going into turn number one. One ninety three down the back. This is gonna be quick for the fifty five. One ninety two off into three. This could threaten for the front row for the fifty five. What a job that would be for them if they can do it. Brian Hart off of turn number four down into the trial. The one ninety two at the start finish line, the lap time. A 46.93 with a 5. That's third fastest for the 55. Great lap time. That's going to help them get in the field. That I I think if you can run a 46 at this point, you are in the field. I think that a 46 will lock you in today at this point. I'm willing to bet. Because we're 49 cars in. Great lap time for Brian Hart and the Michael Walter Racing team. And that knocks out the 96 Gibbs car, so they got to have to race their way in. <laughs> Jackie Tang in the 50 is going to be the 50th car to take time today. And Jackie Tang, a rookie to the series, and the 50, a fairly uncommon number to the Coke Vanilla Cup series as well. Yeah, they only ran about a handful of times with the Don Arnold team and then one with Perkulis. This is a brand new team from Sky Motorsports, uh, with NOS Energy sponsor. Pretty sick looking scheme we'll see full time. I believe Tang ran last year in the Hooters or the trucks, right? Nope. This is Jackie Tang's first appearance on my channel in terms of a race other than maybe like a one-off here or there uh the the 50s 188 in turn one they have no points uh, uh the 60 is the bump speed i think that's randolph right tim randolph in the 60 48 344 is the bump speed this lap time not going to be in danger of that at all 190 down the back straightaway held the 188 through turn one and two and it's going to be 191 off into turn number three it's not comparative really well with the 55 who just went out but this should be a very solid lap time for jackie tang might put them in the top eight who knows might definitely i would say top 15 over four and coming into the tri oval jackie tang finishes his lap it's going to be a 47 27 with a nine that would be 20th fastest for the 50 okay so that top 20 is where it's really competitive i will say that obviously uh, definitely in that 10 to 20 range, I'd say, is competitive. But still a solid lap time for Jackie Tang. We'll have to see how well that holds up and if Tang will be one of the drivers that has to race their way in through the duels. And and uh, that bumps um, Randolph, who has to race or points his way into the field. James Qualls in the 26, Irwin Tools Ford for Roush Fenway Racing. Next car on the track making the switch from the Gibbs Racing number 11 to the 26 this season. So the 26 car last year with McCullough did, it actually was did not, the first time in history someone did not score a top 10 running the, excuse me, the full season. Right, so the, the, season. the 26 wasn't really good the season before, I believe with Ashley Brock behind the wheel. Ashley Brock was the other one. She DNQ'd a lot. 186 down in a turn one for James Qualls. 
No, the, this car is very cursed. Qualls did run the 26th in Hooters last year, so kind of reuniting, moving up. Uh, basically. Um, not looking like it's going to be a solid lap time for James Qualls. This is not going to be in the top 20 because he is definitely tracking slower than Jackie Tang, who just went out. Um, 190 into turn three. Didn't Qualls win Sonoma last year? I uh, believe so, yes. But right now, this car, not one of the cars that has a whole lot of points behind it. It does have some. I believe they're 42nd. Down to the line for James Qualls to complete his lap. The lap time, a 47.50 with an 8. By the way, that's going to put him 34th fastest, and that will the 45 has to race his way in now. Raphael Leduc bumped from the fastest 42 here today. Will have to race his way in. They do not have the points in that car. The next car on track will be the 01 of Pretty Shaw as she will try and make her debut in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series, taking over the ride that Chris Louvier piloted one season ago and did very well in, though. Yeah, he almost won the championship, but he choked it away after Kansas. So the old one has been pretty good in the series. This is a third DEI car out of the stable there. So out of four. There's still one left to go out later on in the session. Who's the other DEI car? The 15. The 15, 01, 8, and who else is there? So you have the 01, the 8. You have the 1, the 01, the 8, and the 15. Oh, that's right. I for, That's right, because this was the, yeah, you're right, the rookie year. They they opened a second car for Regan Smith. So we'll see how we can do. I just hope he doesn't pass below the yellow line at Talladega this year. 189 off of turn number 2. I didn't catch the speed going into turn number 1 for Shaw. This one should be a very competitive lap time as 191 off into turn number 3, down to 190. Shaw Boy. trying to make her Coke Vanilla Cup Series debut. Everhemian is fourth, so let's see what she can do. And Ozcon in the eight was a 47.55, so those are the two comparative laps. Let's see. Cross the line, the lap time, 47.309. That will put her 23rd, one second faster than the McDowell. Oh, wow. And, and that, that will bump Dylan Young out so, of the field. No. No, not out of the 37. field. So 30, there yeah. was some change, so there was some corrections to make. Uh, Henry Sanford, Dylan Young have been bumped from the field. Randolph and uh, the one that we'd said before. Um, oh, who was it now? Anyway, we'll fix that in later points. So 47309 for Pretty Shaw. Next up on the track is going to be the 83 of Time Pollard, who's making his return to the Coke Vanilla Cup Series after a long hiatus. It was back in Season 1 when Time Pollard last was in the Cup Series. So the 83 won a race last year with Comets. Did pretty decent, but fell all the top 30, and he started to struggle. Red Bull's back for its second year. Dixon's 84 were really good part-times. They're going to try to parlay that. This is going to be a quick lap, I think. 188 exiting the tri-oval. 190 it's going to be turn 190 one. into turn one for Time Pollard. Also to note, the uh, we caught Nikolaev out of the series, and Time won the championship last year in Hooters. Um, what it is is, so also worth mentioning, the 45 of Raphael Duke is actually still in the field. That was the other one I was trying to think of. 192 down the back straightaway. This is going to be flirting oh, with the front row, possibly 191 down into three. It's not going to be a pole speed, I think, but it should be in the top five. 190, now down to 189, off of turn number four for Time Pollard. Coming down to the line, it's going to be 190 into the tri-oval, and the lap time oh, for Time Pollard is going to be a 47.059. It's quicker than the 20. It's ninth fastest for the A3. That was a quick time for Time Pollard. That's... Wow, that that's telling me that that's a lot closer up in the front than I thought it was. I thought... Plus, I also thought that was going to be a 46. I did think that, that was going to be a 46. The Red Bull 84 is 12th, and the Steve Paul is 15th. So, great qualifying session for Red Bull. Uh, except for Steve Paul. Hmm? Well, he, no, he's, he's 12th. Oh, okay. <laughs> Henry Williams in car number 18 is the next car on track, making the switch from the Robbie Gordon 77. And also making the switch from part-time to full-time competition in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series. So Henry won last year. I don't. I believe it was Coca-Cola he won. He won the All-Star Race too. Had a great season, and then the Robbie Gordon car, which earned him parlay into the 18. Better sponsorship and better equipment for the 18 car this year. So hopefully they won't be so drastically low in the points. Eminem jumps over for Mary Shelley, hence why Mary kind of got axed too. So we'll see. 187 into turn number one. Not a great turn one entry. 
for Henry yeah, Williams. We'll, so we'll see how they do this year. The Gibbs are bringing five cards to Daytona, so we'll see how this one does. The 18, worth mentioning, does not have the points to be able to make the 500. They will have to either race their way into the duels or qualify their way into the 500. Now, worth mentioning, we are also guaranteed we are at the point in the qualifying where we've been locking people into the field where they cannot be bumped from the top 42. Uh, the lap time, though, for Henry Williams is he's 191 going into the tri-oval, which is actually better than some cars. 47.381 for Henry Williams. So 47.3. That will put him 30th fastest, but that will not bump him out of the field. So it Henry Williams is guaranteed to have a slim shot at best at le or at worst of making the Daytona 500 on speed should they not race their way in through the duels. Al Jabaranowskis is going to be the next car out on track making the switch to the 11 although I will say this they did run part-time for Gibbs in last season a uh, few races as well as then part-time for Weiler racing the 46 Toyota. Yep, so the 11 car really didn't do... Well, they won a race with Qualls, but were kind of mediocre in the top 30 in points. So Baranowskis, even though she had a horrifically bad Hooters season, she got a promotion to the full-time car, I guess, for doing pretty good in that open race in the 80 and car. And she's got so, speed right now, 189 into turn number one for Baranowskis. Yeah, one of the five Gibbs cars here. Um, She did... Was only the only part-time car not to win last year, so she's trying to improve that stat this year. Picked up speed through one and two. Up oh, to 192 down the back straightaway for Baranowskis. 193 as she goes off into turn three, back down to 192. This could be a quick lap. Worth Bob. mentioning, the top time after this run, whoever has the fastest speed will race the Daytona 500 on speed. 191. Wow. It's not going to be a pole lap, I think, for Baranowskis, but it should be in the top eight, I think. The lap time, 46.999. That is seventh fastest. That locks Jack James and sends Bar uh, Bill Braddock out. Well, he has to be on points or, or race his way in. Uh, worth mentioning, Zorline got bumped on the last one as well. We're a little bit behind on some of those. So Baranowski is currently in the top seven, and the 28 Yates Racing Ford will race in the Daytona 500. Oh, man. <laughs> Matt Duncan, next car on track, and the sun Rip. has peaked through the clouds here at the Daytona International Super Speedway, which means it's very likely that the 77 of William Flickinger, who is currently second quickest, will lock in to the Daytona 500, which is huge for Penske Racing because the 77 team, using the 06 points from last season, was not going to be good enough to make the 500 on any circumstance. So that is one car that will race, which means the 26 of James Qualls will have to race their way in or make it in on speed to race in the 500. And they're 38th right now. The sixth car with Ebrahimi had a couple fourth place, almost made the chase. Didn't really do much. It was an improvement from Will Lewis. Well, Will Lewis made the chase, so... But he missed a few races. So we'll see how the sixth car does this year. Um, bump speed to for move. this run is... A 48-1-1-1. So this is actually the first time we've had an interesting bump time. So, will how does Matt Duncan fare? Let's see. 186 off into turn number three. It was 187 for a moment. Problem is, um, I don't know if we're competing with a clear time or a cloudy time at this point. Uh, it's a clear time. The, cl the cloudy times are the 47s. And down to the line for Matt Duncan trying to make his first ever Coke Vanilla Cup Series start. It's going to be a 48-47 nope. with a three. Which That's means 50th. The, the speed will not be there, but Matt Duncan might be able to make it in on points. Oh, that 50th fast is ouch. <laughs> so speed's not going to be good enough for Duncan. He knows that much, at least. Rob Evans, the next car to go out on track. The return of the 0-9 James Finch team after a one-season hiatus as Rob Evans and the 0-9 team buying the four Morgan McClure's points, which is good enough for 28th. Just like, it's kind of like a real-life thing, too. But also with the 09 car, the last time they were in the series, they won with Kyle Matthews at Talladega. So their Super Speedway program is pretty good. So we'll, let's see what they can do. This is a this is also a Henrik Motorsports technical car to help Brad Keselowski out in real life. So we'll see how that motor must be pretty good. Well, right now, 188. One, barely, it started to flicker to 189 as he went off into turn number one. Back, it's flirting between 188, 189 through one and two so far. Uh, we're, what are our lot times that we're looking at? We're looking at 48-1-1-1 to bump in. 
That is the last uh, clear time for the, which is 41. The rest are the cloudy, so the 49 will be the next true time to see. And then what was, what's the third fastest time that we're looking at for locking into the 500? The third fastest time is a um, 46.935. Okay, so down to the line for Rob Evans. The verdict is, will the 09 race 47.128? Uh, that's definitely, that's 13th fastest. That's so and they that will not in the... lock in today, but they will they will be able to fall back on speed if they they have a shot to be able to fall back on speed, I should say. That's the, 50, say. the 55 is locked into the field. So Brian Hart will make his Coke Vanilla Cup Series debut. He will race in the Daytona 500. Alexander Rowe in car number 15, the next car to take to the track in the DEI Menard Chevrolet with Peak Antifries on the hood. Trying to lock himself in compared to his teammate Delon Abrahimian, who is the next car to lock in should they go slower. Unfortunately for Rowe, though, the sun peeking through the clouds here at Daytona International Speedway. So Rowe's lap probably not going to be that good, and it's just a continuation of what happened last season for him. Storyline of his career, but the 15 was pretty solid with Theo and uh, Almarego in the wheel. They made the chase, I believe, both seasons, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, well, so... The thing with Thiel was they won a race, but that was also a split season because Henry Sanford started the year and then yeah, got injured. Injured. So Although the 15, 15 has, has had a story career. They had Jeff James drive the car for the first few seasons, and that went really well. Yeah, but now the 15 is probably going to miss 20 races this year, so poor 15 team. 185 through 3 and 4. Oh, this boy. is not even quick compared to the clear times. Uh, should mention what the bump speed would have been. 47.632, and we ain't getting no chance in hell on that. And 48.607 for Alexander Ouch. Rowe. 56 quickest. Alexander, ladies, eight cars. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Alexander Rowe. <laughs> Zach Rogers is going to be the next car to take to the two and a half mile super speedway here at Daytona. Zach Rogers sticking with Everham for a second straight season, but making the switch from the 10 over to the 19 which is actually going to have fewer points than what the 10 did. Um, uh, the, go ahead. Zach, Zach had a pretty decent season at 10. He didn't win a race, I don't believe, but he had, was pretty solid. Top 30 in owner points car. The 19 won with Fitzwater last year, but kind of really didn't do anything besides that win for his vengeance. But like I mentioned with the other cars, they do have an RNG test car this season to help them out, so I expect the speed to improve for them. But this mentioning comes there's the three lap times we're looking at with the 19, depending on what, and we'll know which one we're kind of looking at once we get to turn one. Uh, it's looking like the uh, really good for the two car of um, row, not row. One eighty, uh, Isaac Flickinger. One eighty-seven into turn number one. Oh, this is not uh, good. This might be a lap where Zach Rogers just wants to guarantee that they're in the top forty-two. The bump speed to be top forty-two in this session so far is a forty-six. So forty-seven six three two. And if he could get there, a 47.508 would guarantee that the 19 could not be bumped from the top 42. But right now, I don't know which one we're looking at. It looks like Rogers might be close to even just making the field on speed if we did just top 42. Coming to the trial, 190 miles an hour for Zach Rogers. The lap time going to be a 47.312. He will, ooh, 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 barely. He will be top 42 no matter what. That will bump the 49. They have to race their way in now. And Isaac Flickinger in car number two will race in the Daytona 500. Wow. JT Bryant trying to make his, well, actually will be making his debut in the Coke Vanilla Cup Series as this car is locked in on points from last season. Second place in the owner's points from a season ago. The sun peeking through the clouds once again, which means this is probably not going to be a competitive lap time for JT Bryant which that will lock Mary Shelley into the field for the Daytona 500 on her qualifying speed, which does mean one th huge thing for the uh, who will make this race as JT crossed the line. Either Mark George will take the past champions, champions provisional or there will be no past champions provisional used to make the 500. And that's good for Mary because she might have to use a race th two through eight. But the 42 car won the Drivers' Championship last year, had a great season. The 42 was dead last in the 06 season, so they went from the bottom to the top. So maybe they'll go mediocre now. But this lap time is going to be in the toilet. Uh, yeah, and this will guarantee that James Qualls will be in the top 42, which is good news for the Roush Racing team with the 26 team. 
considering that we now know that the 26 will not be able to point their way into the 500. There's, with Mary Shelley making the race, there is another driver who will not be able to point their way in. I know that much. Yeah. Um, I and have to figure out who it is, so. This is going to be brutal. The lap time for JT Bryan, a 48 <laughs> Oh, that's 58 fastest. Ouch. Out of 60. 58 oh. out of 60. He beat two cars. Yeah, Matt Dixon and then Robert Pollard. <laughs> Derek Hamill in this double zero is going to be the next to last car to go out to the track here for Daytona 500 pole day qualifying. This is one of the cars that is locked into the field as the cl clouds are back over the two and a half mile super speedway. Yeah, so the double zero won a race last season. Pretty good debut for MWR with Henry. He was the strongest car by far with the team. And the double zero ran pretty good with Jeff James, I believe, in the 06 season. So see how they'll do. They were top. Tw they were. They ran top twenty-five in the points. I think most of the year. Yeah, this is. Um, yeah, this is probably the same guy. He signed up all, all the MWR stuff. Yep. One eighty-eight into turn number one. It's going to be a decent <coughs> lap, I think, here for Hamill. And so, much needed for a lot of the drivers who were lower in points that could make it. One ninety so down the back. Go ahead. He just got to beat a forty-seven five seventy. That's all he's got to do. Uh, worth mentioning, the time to lock into the 500 on speed would be uh, 46.999. If he can get there, that would put, if the double zero can lock in on speed, that would ensure that the nine of Marcus Ambrose would race in the Daytona 500. Coming to the line for Hamill, the lap time going to be a 47.244. He's actually going to tie the first tie with the 05. <laughs> Oh my How ironic. God. Well, the double zero gets that tiebreaker, though, on points. So. Yep, and that will lock the 11 in the field. So, great news for Al Jabaranowskis, who will race in the Daytona 500 this season. And who got bumped? Uh, the 0-2 will have to race his way in now. Logan York bumped from the field of 42. So we're down to one. And it all comes down to this. Adam Flickinger, the rookie for Penske Racing, is going to be the final car to take a time here at the Daytona International Super Speedway. This, a three-time pole-sitting car last season with Amy Shelley. And what's at stake here? Jack James, we know, will be on the front row. It's just a matter of will the 12 beat him. We know a Penske car is going to be on the front row. It's just will it be the 12 or the 77. Will Ethan Keiterman lock into the 500 on his speed today with the 13... We'll have to see if the 12 can go faster than a 47. Ooh. Oh, what was, I lost it. A 47.029. Only 186 off into turn number one. It's not looking good for the 12. That's looking like he might not even beat the top 43 with that speed. 42. The, 42, sorry. And then also worth mentioning versus these eight of Semedo's kind of 47.55 with a three. Yep, this is huge in here. So, yeah, look like make might lock in the field, but let's see what happens. 190 into turn three. Ugh. We didn't really mention what the 12 did last season, but that's beside the point. Really what mattered was more just this oh, lap. God. 188 off of turn number four. It's not looking good, I think, for the 12. Down to the line for the Penske Ooh. Racing Alltel Dodge. It's going to be a 47-617. It's not good enough. That's not even going to be in the top 42. Holy crap. That should be 43rd quickest, I think. For 44th. That's behind York. That's fine. So the 12 will not be able to race or get in on po on speed. And Ethan Kiderman, Jermaine Racing, will be in the Daytona 500. And Charles Sanford's going to be sweating the bullets. <laughs> Which that, what the, he's referring to there is that means that the 12, or sorry, the 05 cannot point their way into the Daytona 500. So it'll come down to Thursday whether or not the 05 can be quick enough to make the field or whether or not they can race their way into the duel through the duels. Do you want me to give like the rundown or are we just going to do that uh, later? We could. <laughs> That's up to you. Uh, I was probably going to show it. I was going to show who's in what duels. Oh, okay. I could. Okay. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, do you want to do a field rundown? We're all, yeah. I mean, we're on air still. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. So the full the rundown right now: Jack James, Flickinger, right the fifth. The rundown right now. <laughs> the, <laughs> the we we feel we filled the field, and now oh well, nope, we got one extra somewhere. Wait, what? No kidding. 
Oh, oh, I was about to say, who, who's the 63rd card? Is Vince McMahon coming out or something? The 55 is third. The line of Bohemian, who went out for, first, is ended up fourth. The 2 card was fifth. The 08 is Shelley. The 11 card was seventh. I don't remember some of the names. That's why I'm saying the numbers. But I might Ethan, do is overlay this, too. You just might overlay yeah. the field. The 13th is eighth. The 9 of Turner was ninth. Good lot for the rookie. Time Paul at 10th. The 20 of Brock was 11th. The 30 of Sky Commons 12th. The 09 of Evans was 13th. I was 14th. The 40 car of Ali Nelson 15th. The 16 of White was 16th. The 82 was 17th of Steve Pollitt. The 78 of Amy Shelley, right? Yep. Was in the car. Max Anderson 19th. The rookie in the double zero was 20th, who tied with Charles Sanford, but the double zero gets a tiebreaker. 22nd was the plant, which is a great run for a car along. The 34 car of Young was thir- 23rd. Jackie Tan was 24th. The 25th was the 10. I believe that was one of the MoMA uh, guys. The 33 was 26th with Deaver. The Owen of Shea was 27th. The 44 of McDowell was 28th. The 19th of Rogers was 29th. 30th was the 43 of Will Hoyt. No, not Will Hoyt. Louvier. 99 was next with um, Will Hoyt. Uh, 29 was 32nd. The 31 of Duncan was 33rd. 34th was the 18 car of... I don't remember. 47th was... 18 was, was 40, Henry Williams. Henry Williams was 34th. Gene Sanford. Johnny Gardner, who was the fastest Hendrick car in 36. Mightily struggling for Hendrick. 20, 37th was the 21 car of Shelton. The 9 was 38th. The 66th was 39th. The 5 of Seth Cole was 40th. 41st was Qualls, and 42nd was Oscon. The people outside of the top 42 who will either have to point their way in or race their way into the field. The O2 of York and the 4th Joe Gibbs, and the, one of the 5 Gibbs cars. Amy, not Amy, Adam Flickinger. I cannot believe I just messed it up while he's on the screen right now. The 49 yeah. car is 45th. Todd LeDuc was 46th. Braddock was 46th. Raphael LeDuc in the 45. Ra- the 70 Todd. Oh. <sighs> That's a Tom. I think he said Todd. That's a monster jam driver. The 17 is Bill Braddock in 47th. Zorro Lions 48th. Uh, Randolph with pretty good points is 49th. 50 is the 37. They have to race their way in. The 24 of Young. 96 is one of the Moma uh, guys. Moma. The 20, the 22 of I don't Chris remember. Wilson. Chris Wilson. The six of Duncan. 07 car. The 48 of. Back, yeah. On Jack Matthews, the 27 was a rookie. The 7 of Henry Sanford, who is the highest in owner points and most like is locked into the field. The 15 car, who was also, I believe, locked into the field, 48-607. The 42 is 60th, and 61st was the 70 of Dixon. And rounding out the field, ready to commit suicide, was Robert Powell, the slowest guy by two seconds in the field. Yeah, Robert Powell, the only person lower than a 49, and he was in the 50s. <laughs> That that seventy five's got an uphill climb to make the fi- make the field. I will say that. You think? <laughs> uh, so with that, that is it for qualifying. Going up on the screen either already or shortly will be your dual lineups for dual one and dual two. Uh, remember that it's going to be the top fourteen in the duel besides the front row. So let's say Jack James in dual one ends up finishing seventh then we'll take the top 15 from the duels yep if he's finishing if the 28 of jack james finishes 17th then we only took the top 14 for the duels mm-hmm. for duel one so that's how that will work it's basically just like the old system because i like that system for daytona qualifying a lot better than locking people in for like top 30 or whatever yeah and uh, actually, that's going to be similar style to what we're going to do all season long with qualifying is going to be dual format with 62 cars. So I think it's going to be more enjoyable for you guys. In all honesty, we'll probably try and premiere all of the qualifyings. Uh, actually, I'm going to try and premiere all the videos for the most part. Um, we'll see what happens. If I can remember to premiere them is going to be the main part because I do like that feature if when used. But and we'll both that, be in the comment section. Yeah. That too. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't today for more gaming and racing related content. I'm Goran Fan291. This has been Stephen Pollard. Join me once again for stats along the way. And I'll and see you guys next time. See you guys.